A large storm is coming to the United States over the next few days, and this will bring some big problems, including the return of severe weather, which includes damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes across parts of the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, and even back through the East Coast. This will also bring some heavy rainfall that could lead to some localized flooding. And as we go into this weekend, we are about to see much warmer weather return to much of the country after big freezes over the last few days, including areas like Alabama and Mississippi. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. We'll begin with what's happening across the country today and the East Coast is finally clearing out from all the severe weather and all the rain that we've had over the last few days. But unfortunately for a lot of these areas, this is not going to last very long. we got another storm system that is currently beginning to form back over in the Midwest and this will bring some showers and isolated thunderstorms today. But as we go into tomorrow, it is going to bring a very interesting severe weather event to parts of the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valley, which is an area that just does not need more rainfall or severe weather. And unfortunately, more of that is coming over the next few days. And before we talk more in detail about this big storm system, I do want to talk more about our general weather pattern. And we're going to begin with our jet stream. So right now we have a high pressure system in the upper levels back over in the southwest. This, for the most part, is blocking any sort of major severe weather outbreaks from entering the United States. However, there is a weird little storm system here that's coming out of Canada that's beginning to form and this right here is a shortwave trough and this is going to bring the threat of severe weather as we go into tomorrow to parts of the Ohio Valley so look at this as we go into Thursday we get this big dip in the jet stream also the ridge is going to intensify back over on the west coast so a couple different things are going to be happening Thursday and Friday we're going to get a lot of cold air coming out of Canada which is going to bring a little bit more of a chilly feel to those in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley on the other hand warm weather is going to be building back over in the Rockies and along the west coast on thursday eventually by friday and saturday this low pressure system is going to be very slowly moving notice how large of a dip we have back over on the east coast this is going to bring the threat for some very heavy rainfall i think both friday and saturday to many areas along the east coast and a little bit of severe weather as well and then eventually as we go into the weekend and early next week that ridge is going to be building across the great plains which is going to bring some warmer weather back and this is going to bring a little bit of a spring heat wave i think for many areas in the Great Plains in the Midwest and eventually by next week we are likely going to start to see the return of at least some significant severe weather events exactly when that happens we don't really know but we are probably going to start to see some troughs form back over in the Pacific that move over the Rockies and those are the ones that usually bring significant severe weather and we are obviously in April so this should come as no surprise we are going to see the return of severe weather I think very soon exactly to what degree and where it happens all does remain still up in the air now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days and our biggest threat will be tomorrow which is tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday we do have a slight risk of severe weather in place for parts of Tennessee right along the Mississippi River Valley near Memphis back into central Alabama and Mississippi where the main concern will be damaging winds large hail and also the potential for a couple of tornadoes we also have a marginal threat that goes back up towards Cincinnati Evansville Indiana and also into central southern parts of Alabama and even near Atlanta Georgia so overall, again, the main concern will be damaging winds and large hail. Large hail is really going to be the main concern. And honestly, tomorrow looks very interesting when it comes to hail because we could legitimately have hail that coats the ground in some areas because of how cold aloft the temperatures are going to be. Essentially, our lapse rates are very steep, which means as we go up in height, our temperature is rapidly decreasing. This is going to promote a much more elevated risk for hail. And even if it's not large in your area, which it could be, but if it, even if it wasn't, we could legitimately have have a ton of hail on the ground which could literally look like snow out there tomorrow in some areas so definitely a very interesting setup there is a low chance that we actually go live tomorrow so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live additionally there is a low end tornado risk with tomorrow's threat of severe weather our storms are going to be moving to the southeast which is not very favorable for severe weather in terms of tornadoes during the month of april but it is definitely still something to keep a close eye on as we will have some wind shear that'll be able to spin some of these storms a little bit but generally speaking if we were to see a tornado memphis nashville and back into northern alabama are the main areas i'd be watching for for an isolated brief tornado or two though we have an environment tomorrow that is favorable for tornadoes our storms moving to the southeast will kind of prevent at least some of this tornado risk taking place but there will be enough wind shear across the ohio valley and tennessee valley where we could see an isolated tornado or two most of our significant tornado parameter values are right around one to two in most spots right around and just 
after lunchtime. So we might see a couple of tornadoes. Generally speaking, though, the threat is pretty low, and overall the tornado risk is pretty much done no later than about 9 to 10 o'clock tomorrow. I think our peak for this, if we were to see tornadoes, right around 1 up until about 7 or so is really the main time frame for a couple of tornadoes. So definitely make sure that you have a tornado action plan ready to go. So here's the timing for the next couple of days. Beginning with today, we'll have some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms out there today. Severe weather, not anticipated, but we could see a couple of strong thunderstorms this evening that could produce some small hail from around St. Louis back into central Indiana. By tomorrow, we'll start to see a little bit more of an uptick in terms of our storm activity a little after lunchtime. A couple of areas I'd be watching for, one of which is going to be southeast Missouri, right around St. Louis and southern Illinois, and then also back over in northern Alabama and northern Georgia. Primarily, the main concern here will be large to very large hail and also some damaging winds with these storms. But as we get closer to 3, 4, 5 o'clock, notice how storms continue to fire up. Very warm weather will lead to the potential for multiple thunderstorms out there. Another key thing I want to point out is that at the surface, our dew points are only forecasted to be in like the mid to upper 50s in most of these areas. So basically, that means our cloud heights will likely be a bit more elevated, which should limit, again, our tornado risk in general. But I think if we were to see a tornado, these would be the storms to really watch for. And keep in mind that these storms could fire up a little bit earlier than this, but generally speaking, sometime in the early to mid-afternoon hours is when I'd expect storms to fire up. Notice how they're mostly discrete, so this will also promote more of a threat for a large hail in this particular environment. By around 8 to 9 o'clock, these storms continue to move southeast. They'll start to cluster more together right after sunset across the Dixie Alley, where damaging winds and isolated hail will continue to be a possibility. And then as we go into late Friday night, our severe weather threat is dying down. So this storm system will bring some severe weather, but even as we go into Friday, this storm is going to continue to bring some problems. A little bit more severe weather is possible, mainly in eastern North Carolina as we go into Friday afternoon. Plenty of rain falling in the mid-Atlantic and also across the southeast. Eventually by Friday night and Saturday morning, the storm will be slowly drifting into the Atlantic Ocean, and as it does that, there will be a threat for a little bit of a mix of rain and snow in parts of New England, but generally speaking, this is not some sort of nor'easter at all. This is definitely not anything more than just a little bit of snow, some snow flurries, really not expecting any sort of snow accumulation up there on Friday or Saturday. Eventually by Sunday and Monday, this storm is still just spinning offshore, so we'll continue to at least see some showers and some gusty winds back over near Cape Cod and southern New England. By Monday, another significant storm system will make a close approach to the United States, but with its current pathing, this will likely not bring much of any severe weather, a little bit of snowfall maybe to the upper Midwest. By the middle and end of next week, we're going to have high pressure building once again along the East Coast. And again, our next big severe weather maker might not be until at least around April 18th to April 25th. That's the current time frame I'm looking for. So definitely make sure that you're still staying weather aware as we get closer to the middle and end of April. We should see a lot more significant severe weather events take place, especially as we're getting closer to the peak of severe weather season. In terms of our temperatures over the next few days, we've had a big freeze on going back over in the Midwest and the Northeast, really below average temperatures, even in New England as we go later into today. But eventually by tomorrow, warm air is building across the Great Plains and as well as along the West Coast, where we could have some record-breaking high temperatures on Thursday and Friday. Cold air continues to sit down across the Ohio Valley and Southeast on Friday and Saturday. By Sunday and Monday, though, that warm air should start to make a return as that low-pressure system slowly moves offshore. We'll have another shot of cold air back over in the northern and central plains. But before that happens, warm air will build across the Ohio Valley and as well as the southern plains, where a small little heat wave will build here as we go into next week. And eventually by the middle and end of next week, just notice again, we're going to continue to see multiple shots of cold air. And once again, it is April. This is very typical where we do see multiple different troughs that move through. So we should have multiple shots of both cold and warm air over the next couple of weeks, basically making it a temperature roller coaster across the United States. And then in terms of rainfall over the next seven days, not really expecting much if you're in the Great Plains or along the West Coast, but if you're back over the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, or Northeast, good chance that you'll at least see a few showers, maybe even a couple thunderstorms. Greatest amount of rainfall will be around Maryland, where we could see as much as one to three inches of rainfall, which could lead to some localized flooding. Our temperature trends for the next several days, going into Monday of next week all the way through Friday, we are expecting above average temperatures across the Great Plains and the West Coast and below average temperatures near the Great Lakes. And then in terms of rainfall, as we go into next week, the bulk of this will be falling anywhere from Texas all the way back through the Northeast. But again, this is not really going to increase in intensity until at least the end of next week. I think generally speaking, at least from about Saturday and Sunday all the way through about Wednesday or Thursday, things will stay relatively dry, but things will start to increase, I think, in activity once we start to see some of those more big storm systems move over the Rockies by the end of 
next week. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. And a shocking turn of events, we actually made a video today. I had no intention of making a video until at least Friday, so uh, definitely kind of a surprise here. But again, it did warrant at least a video here for today for that severe weather potential tomorrow. There's a chance that we go live, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. And don't forget, our Supercell merch is now out at shopmaxvelocity.net. It is the top link in the description below. Amazing design, all hand-drawn, no AI involved with this at all. So if you want to check this out, again, top link in the description below or at shopmaxvelocity.net.